How many of you have been handed a piece of paper that says, vote at abolitionist? Okay. Yeah. On the front, we've got this wild leaf, and it's standing behind the bars, and its bars are busting through the wall. Now, this is a very powerful statement. This imagery is very powerful, because this is us. That pot leaf is us. The pot leaf is the symbol of freedom in Canada. The sign, I don't know if it's still here, I think somebody took it home, but uh, full of cannabis. Did you see it? Is it still there? Canada flag, and instead of a maple leaf, we have, there it is, we have a cannabis leaf. Oh, cannabis. That says it right there. If this country was to stand up together, come together, united on the cannabis issue, that would be our national flag. Anyway, I'm here to introduce the abolitionist party, the leader and founder of this party, John Turmel. Let's hear it for him. Put it together. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out because it certainly takes a lot of guts when there may be some narcs in the audience, but the guys you saw with the suits, they're not narcs, they're with me. Now, a couple of them had long hair just a month ago, but because we're in politics and because we have to appeal to your parents and your grandparents, we have to cut our hair. And Steve, I'm sure, will vouch that was the biggest sacrifice in his life giving up a foot of hair to appeal politically, but that's why we're short hair, we're blue suits, but we're certainly pro-hemp for all the right reasons. Now, thank you. Now, I've run 36 elections in the last 15 years. My first one in 1979 to legalize dope, legalize gambling, and then I found out about interest rates, which create poor people. And you have to understand that these laws, don't you feel there's a hidden agenda there? You see more and more important people coming up saying, there's nothing wrong, everybody knows it's harmless, let's decriminalize it, and what happens? They're doubling the penalties. Because it's not dawned on you that no matter what you do, there is a hidden agenda that you have no control over. Now that's what the guys who control the world, who own it, I should say, through money, do. It's called pressure from above and pressure from below. Pressure from above is the bad law. Pressure from below are the people, the people they call criminals, that they have to have their war on drugs for. Now, so they can have a ready army of people they can send their police to battle with, they have to create an underclass of jobless people who have no choice once they've been busted once but to get into dealing if they want to survive. Now, how do they get this class of jobless people? Well, that's where usury, interest rates, come in. Let the suckers all 10 chips, poker chips, make the suckers all promise to pay back 11 poker chips, and at the end end of the game, one of the suckers gets knocked into unemployment, you see this collateral, strip them, throw them in the street, broke. And that's how they create the underclass of poor people through usury. And that's why our party, we're called the Abolitionist Party, like the abolitionists in the States a hundred years ago for slavery, except they didn't finish the job. They got rid of the chains, but they didn't get rid of the financial chains. And anytime you sign a document that says, Lend me $10 that you print, and I promise to pay back $11 and you can have my house. Well, you better not be alone on your island, or your mortgage is going to kill you. They're going to take your island. Now, mortgage comes from the French words mort, meaning death, and gage, meaning gamble. Death gamble. Just like musical chairs. Somebody always gets knocked out into poverty and that's how the controllers own and control the world by creating these masses of jobless poor people. I mean, when the company goes under, they just say, sorry, we're laying off 10,000 people and everybody, they just pack up their tent and they go home and they go over unemployed and things are bad. So, our party and of course we're talking about the Indians early. We had our first speaker who told us in Canada, the Senecas used to grow hemp and they used to smoke hemp and things were wonderful. I'd also point out that those Indians were bright enough to use their own interest-free wampum. 
Indian, any Indian had the right to issue his own deed worth a horse, or a cow, or a chicken, or an eagle, and that became currency in town. Now, what our party's doing is we have created an electronic wampum system called Green Dollars. You might have heard of the local employment trading system, the barter system that's making the news around the world. It's a computer program where you open up an account, and you can now go negative if you buy from your buddy who goes positive, and nobody pays interest to go negative. Now, this barter system, this software is spreading around the world and is competing with the banking system software that charges interest. And, of course, hopefully, we will eventually all have an interest-free credit card. And if your boss ever had access to an interest-free credit line, he could hire everybody as long as the demand was there. So, the Indians, they had not only good vibes with hemp, but they had full employment because they had interest-free wampum. And our party's an abolitionist because we want to abolish interest rates. Number two, we want to abolish hemp prohibition. Number three, we want to abolish gambling prohibition. We want to abolish any prohibitions that deal with victimless crime. As long as you're not bothering me, I don't care what you do. Are you some guy wants to throw a little reefer up in the middle of Alaska. I'm not happy with government sending up helicopters to go pick them up. Like our friend earlier who just went through the thing. Now, as for fighting back, we have stiff the bank kits, which allow people to file a defense when a bank forecloses, and it slows everything down. And instead of being thrown out by one clerk with a default judgment, some people get 16 judges by the time they reach the Supreme Court of Canada and are thrown out. Now, Brother Paul Kovac over there is now in the process of preparing a similar kit for hemp users. A do-it-yourself fighting kit. Now, of course, it's true. It's easier probably to walk in there, plead guilty, take the criminal record, or lose your job and think it's over, or assume it is and be ready to go in the underground economy. But you can fight back. The only thing lacking is the paperwork. Now, paperwork work in law is almost like a trapeze. What we're saying is we can provide you with a trapeze to fight your bank foreclosure. We're working on the trapeze to fight your hemp uh, charge. And it's up to you to get up there and do the gymnastics on it. But we can show you how to file your defense and, like you said, demand a jury trial. Make it expensive on them. Now, we're not saying smoke a reefer and get Busted, okay? We're not advocating no one should actually walk out there unless they're unemployed and they could use a winter in the can with some decent food and some hay shelter. But if you're if you are busted, you're the guys we want to use the kit. If they choose to make an example of you, we would like to help you make an example of your case. But don't go out there and invite it because it is onerous. They do ruin you and they can keep you ruined for many years. But if you see that you've been caught, you're going to be ruined, we're going to help you by giving you a kit. A simple kit. Now, we've been to the Supreme Court of Canada nine times with our anti-foreclosure stuff. We know how to do it. We know how to build the gymnastics. We know, I mean, the trapeze. Now all you have to do is say, well, wow, you mean I can ladders? All i got to do is start climbing, and in the meantime, I've got cops on the stand, and I've got judges, and I've got crowns, and I got appeals and I got jurors. Yeah, let's go keep them busy if they want to ruin your life. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there are all sorts of ways that the people who are undergoing jeopardy right now could fight back. Just imagine if everybody got their little ounce of grass, took out the seeds, and rather than flush them down the toilet, they actually went out to some farmer's feet to the side of the highway and just threw them around. You'd have cops chasing them up and down the highways all their lives trying to cut down this marijuana growing by the side of the roads. There are many ways of civil disobedience, but of course the ultimate way is politics. Because 
because only if you go for the political power can you absolutely be sure you're going to get what you want. And you must understand that all these parties back here, they all have major debts to the banks and to the banks who own the multinational corporations. And the multinational corporations rule the world through their ownership of the world's resources. So this hidden agenda, this needing of the poor people at the bottom, because this is the new world order coming here. You've heard the expression many times. You hear about more prisons, more jails, more police, more courts. Well, how come your parents accept that so readily? Simply because they see the war in the streets and they're led to believe that all this violence is somehow natural to the growth of hemp and other such mild intoxicants when it's not. Now, it's going to have to come down to convincing your parents to understand that they have been conned. You've got this 20-foot mini-tree grows in four months. Everybody's mentioned four times more wood than trees, and it can do everything with it, and yet they've managed to outlaw the planet's most useful biomass source. Now, of course, they got us the petroleum industry. They want us burning petroleum because they're making a profit on it. And the last thing they want is us growing biomass we can burn. Unfortunately, petroleum's got sulfur, and that means we got acid rain, and the environment's going to end up destroyed. But at least they make a profit, so they love it. That's one example. There are so many examples where hemp can act actually do things cleanly, environmentally, and replace these high-priced, profitable items that the multinationals sell to us, but that's the real reason the hidden agenda is going on. The forestry industry, they can't have hemp legalized. They'd I mean, be put out of business. Too many little farmers could get into it. You don't need great big logging machinery, and only a few capitalists can get into logging if every little farmer can grow his own little hemp patch. So, Logging, alcohol, you, you think Mr. Bronfman and Seagrams and Moses, they want hemp legalized? The point is, it might be the only way to save most of our alcoholic parents from alcohol, is to teach them about the benign effects of this milder intoxication. So they take the alcoholic substance which debases mankind, it's not in the Bible, who was it, Noah? I think they laughed at Noah for getting drunk and whatever. You never saw anybody laughing at Noah for getting stoned. Okay, so there are no condemnations that I know of in the Bible against any vegetation except grapes. Right? So, now the poverty in the 50s is obvious. Why didn't your parents in the 50s have to go on to marry? Why were there none of these problems in these drug wars and nothing? Because in the 50s, interest rates were at 3%. And that means that almost nobody was getting squeezed out so the others could survive the death gamble. Almost everybody had a job. I mean, everybody could afford a bottle of booze on the weekends. And without this undercurrent of jobless, desperate people, they can't make war. Now they've created the underclass of jobless people who have no choice but to go into hemp or drugs if they want to make a decent living as quickly as a banker, for instance, okay? <laughs> and now, again, this New World Order stuff is kind of scary because they've got the technology now to give everybody a money card, a debit card, and that means that if they don't like you, they can simply cut your access to your money and you cannot sell or buy with anyone anymore. Now that's cute because that's predicted in the Bible in the end times when they'll be able to, you need this mark of the beast they call it, or you won't be able to buy or sell with anybody. Well the technology is here. I'm an electrical engineer specializing in computers and the mathematics of gambling and believe me, this is the greatest oppression mechanism, slavery mechanism, because the day you can't deal with cash is the day that they can start you to death right in your own hometown. Now, 
There's a good point about this high technology and this oppressive machine. It also means that no matter how big and overall it becomes, all you have to do is switch the disks at the central computer and put in the interest free green dollar system, which fixes that thing. So now I have to wrap up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly read my poem that I wrote last week. And I'd like you people to read it or look. Follow it as I go. I could sing it, but glory, glory, hallelujah, Lord, I think I'll, uh, maybe the refrain you can help, but here it goes. Throughout all history, hemp's been a plant of great repute. Four months to grow a mini tree of 20 feet from shoot. More oxygen converted from dioxide carbon smogs. Four times more wood than forestry can chop trees into logs. A hardy plant, insecticides and fertilizers not. It grows so big, the shade kills weeds for fertile garden plots. With petrofuels, with sulfur being burned into the air? A fuel of biomass would help environmental care. And then you go, help protect human environment, help prevent human defilement, help promote human achievement, God's gift for certain life. Hemp fuel, hemp varnishes, hemp paints, hemp fibers, cloth, and rope. Hemp fertilizer, oil, and plastics, medicines of hope. There's never been recorded death from using hemp, they say. It's sedative that fits receptors in our DNA. Yeah. While alcohol debases, vibes of negative grow strong. The smoke of hemp makes calm and joy, wishing no one wrong. It's source of protein, primary, for man and beast alike. The best plant used for finger in environmental dike. And it hemp protects human environment. The industry of dirty chemicals may fear. Its nature's agri-chemicals will substitute its clear. For crops of untold uses, which can soon be realized, our greatest source of biomass must first be legalized. The chance that we may yet evade environmental doom with planet's fastest growing vegetable, there's no need for gloom. The abolitionists charge that on lies are based these laws. Abolishing hemp prohibition is our second cause. Abolish interest rates first, get rid of the poverty, and even with real enough jobs, we still want hemp instead of booze. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great. I enjoyed that very, very much. Very much. Good job.